Thank you. Um, I'm hoping that I don't, that the slides don't run away with me, but I'll try to keep up with them. This is an Egyptian mummy wrapped in linen with a portrait painting placed over the face. These portraits date from 2,000 years ago when Egypt was part of a Roman Empire. They were painted in a technique called encaustic, a paint made from pigments in beeswax and resin. When I first saw one of them in the Metropolitan Museum in New York, I was simply amazed. I mean, how, did, how did artists do that so long ago? Um, and they're so perfect and so fresh looking. I decided I was going to try to work out how they did it. And about more than 30 years ago, I started using wax, which has to be melted in something like an electric frying pan. Um, pigment you can mix with the wax or you can buy it ready mix and a heat gun which sort of seals and fuses the colors of wax together at the end. This technique was made popular again by the American painter Jasper Johns in the 1950s. You can see his hot plate and saucepan in the bottom right hand corner. So I started learning the technique using an electric frying pan. And this is one of my first attempts. It's of the painter Poussin, and it is about 30 years old. Um, recently, I started experimenting more with the heat gun that fuses the colors at the end of the painting. Um, you and this is an example. What happened was it ran away with me a little bit. You could see the, the mother's mouth slipped down, so her kiss becomes kind of extra moving. <laughs> but I decided there were possibilities in this. The expressiveness um, was something I liked. But who should I paint next? Well, this is my grandson who took this selfie um, on my iPhone without telling me. And later I thought, well, that would make a great painting. So I did, in fact, two drawings from this on two panels. And I painted them in different colors and heated them. Now, you can't really control what happens with the overheating. So in this one, he turned out a little bit like Dracula. <laughs> and in the next one with different colors, although it was the same drawing, um, he looks rather like a young Oscar Wilde. <laughs> um, so I was learning or trying to learn how to control how much the wax would move and flow. And really being interested in how the faces got transformed so that I felt the expressions came out more than realism, certainly. Um, this was another subject that I used. I ripped this from a concert um, you know, description of a pianist called Rand Dank. I liked that composition, so I tried it. Um, in a painting that you'll see in a minute. <laughs> when I heated it, well, the cheeks dropped and the eyes suddenly swooped up. <laughs> and I wanted it to stop, so I moved the heat away. It still moves a little bit, and then it settled. And then I thought, well, that's, that's okay. <laughs> So I attempted someone a bit more infamous. <laughs> I thought, if you're going to be a portrait painter, you better learn how to flatter someone. <laughs> I realized uh, I'm not cut out for that. Um, so I turned to artists from the past whose work I really admire. And this is a wonderful drawing by Egon Schiele. Um, from the early 20th century, a self-portrait. Um, so it became the basis for a painting um, in which the wax around the eyes and the lips 
spread, different colors spread in different ways. It's very unpredictable. The blue spread into the back of his neck and face. Um, but I was satisfied with it. Just the same. It's a far cry from those Egyptian mummy paintings, but um, kept my interest. This is a painting of the Duchess of Alba by Goya from the 18th century, late 18th century. One of my favorite painters. She's wearing a beautiful pink bow, a bit like a fascinator that we might see if we watch for a royal wedding. Um, and here she is in my painting, uh, melted with her eyes, looking rather puzzled and sad. And um, I think she reflects the way perhaps that I have been feeling um, in the last couple of years with all that's going on in the world. Um, in this one, I made up the face. I started making up faces rather than going back to the history of art. I particularly like the way the black pigment moved so softly um, in this one, and that happened without very much heating at all. Um, in this one, with the blue hair, um, I actually worked into it with some oil paint that got melted into it. Um, so I have, um, over the past two years, about 60 of these paintings, and many of them are now hanging in Burlington City Arts. Um, I've tried to show faces with different skin colors, to be inclusive, to reflect the community um, that I live in now in Burlington, very different from the way it was over 40 years ago when I moved here. Um, so, although I'm still bowled over by the beauty and realism of those paintings from 2,000 years ago, I realize I can never get close to that perfection in my own wax paintings. The difference is that the ancient artists were co commemorating the dead. They were preserving their likeness for the afterlife in eternity, while I am trying to capture momentary moods and emotions of the living in America at the present. Thank you. Thank you.